Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to KMRD Radio Stuff. If you're new to the channel or you simply haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. While you're there, hit the bell so you're notified when I make new videos. On today's episode, I'm going to show you how to install this crimp style PL259 onto this coaxial cable. Now this is for RG8X, but the principles are going to apply uh, exactly the same for just about any coax size that uh, you can think of, whether it's RG213 or LMR194 or RG316. Uh, the process is going to be pretty much the same with this. Uh, it, and it's a good thing to know how to do. I started crimping my own connectors early, early, early in my ham radio career. And I find it's just a useful thing to be able to have whether you need to repair a piece of coax or you want to make a jumper cable or you just buy coax uh, in lengths of whatever and you want to put your own connectors on. I think it's a good skill set to have. So I'm going to teach you how to do it today. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's talk about how we need to do this. Now, there's a number of ways to accomplish this task and there's a number of different tools you can use. I'm just going to use a knife to do this, uh, but you could use a coaxial cable stripper. The right size one for this cable is lost, so I have no idea where it is. I'm going to have to get another one. You can actually pick up a coax stripper uh, for like RG8X like we're using today at Harbor Freight for a couple bucks. You can also use some coaxial cable scissors. These are from Messi and Poloni. These are fantastic and you can use these to strip the uh, shielding off of this. But since this is intended for the newbie, I'm going to go ahead and just use a razor blade. So before we start cutting anything, it's important we need to put on to the coax things that are going to go uh, or get finished last. Those need to get uh, put on first. So by that, uh, I like to put some glue line heat shrink on the outside of the connector like this. So that actually needs to go on first, okay? We also need to take our ferrule that's going to crimp the shield and put that on first. And this will actually, uh, this outside will actually unscrew and we're going to go ahead and put that on and that just makes the whole process easier. So we want to make sure that all of those are on the cable first then we can start cutting. Just makes it a lot easier. So now we can put the coax next to the connector and I just want to have it, the center conductor, sticking a little further out than the pin. I'm going to cut it and trim it up later. I just, I'd rather have too much than too little. And I'm just going to kind of mark it here where my left thumb is. And we can use our razor blade and just gently score through the PVC jacket, through the shield, and go slow. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. There's no mistakes, only happy accidents. So now I'm going to kind of slice through the jacket here. I'm not worried about the braid here, but we're going to throw that out. So I want to cut through all of this braid, but I do not want to cut through the center conductor. We want to leave all of those intact. So just like that, this just came out nice and smooth and we don't have any cut pieces of the center conductor, okay? We don't want our shield to touch the center conductor at all. And I want to note, this is old coax that I'm using. I would notice how it's discolored there. So this was actually on an old mobile installation. It's gotten wet in here. So I'm not actually, I'm only using this for demonstration purposes. If your coax looks like this and it's not all beautiful and shiny copper, don't use it. It's bad. Just throw it out and get some new coax. But for demonstration purposes, this is going to work fine. So now we can test and see if we've got long enough, which we do. So now I want to cut off enough of this jacket to reveal uh, the shield of the coax. So about oh three eighths of an inch or so. We want to be very delicate. Just kind of score it. And then we can take, so I've scored it around the coax and then I'm going to make a, a tiny slice going down the jacket and we can use the knife to kind of open it up like that and spread it apart. So now we've separated the jacket without damaging the shield, okay? Now we can fan out our shield like such. And what's going to happen is we're going to insert just like that. 
Now I've got this coming out because we're going to solder this center conductor. We don't need to solder the shield because we're going to crimp that. So now we can grab our ratcheting crimpers. Uh, I'm using 0.213 for this. I don't know if that's actually the right size, but it's what I've been using uh, my whole ham career. So uh, you do need a pair of uh, ratcheting crimpers like this for this to work. So now we are going to bring the ferrule up and over the shield there. And we're simply going to crimp now. And we're going to crimp this down until it clicks. And see how it kind of made, this isn't the perfect uh, size crimp for this, but it gets the job done. Do it again and square it up here. That ain't going anywhere. Now I'm gonna solder this center pin. And I like to use a vise to put my coax in for soldering. Just makes it a bit easier. If you have helping hands like these, you could use these, but this is just a cheap vise from Harbor Freight. I forget how much it was, but it was pretty inexpensive. So I've got a nice shiny tip here. Put a little tin on there. And I'm gonna apply heat to the connector. Get a little in there to get it going. And you want the actual center pin to be hot enough to melt the solder so it flows properly. Okay. And then I'm gonna take some side cutters and I'm just gonna cut that nice and flush. And once your connector has cooled a little bit, we can go ahead and slide our heat shrink over. Get out your favorite Harbor Freight heat gun and start blasting with heat. And once you've allowed your heat shrink to cool for a minute, we can bring up the last part here. Screw that back onto our connector. And now we have a completed Crimpon PL259. Just that easy. So there we have it. You just went from zero to coax PL259 putter honor hero. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But in all seriousness, putting on uh, coax connectors was something that I struggled with a lot as, as an early ham. Uh, from technician even into early general, uh, I always kind of wanted different lengths of coax and stuff. and. Uh, it was just the, time, the kind you had to solder on the shielding, and I'm like, no, this is horrible. I'm, I'm melting it every time, so I discovered the crimp style connector and have never, ever looked back. So hopefully this sheds some light on it. Hopefully it answered some questions and maybe made uh, the whole process a little bit easier for you. So if you enjoy this kind of content, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it, follow me on Twitter at KNMRD. And we'll see you again on another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys. <laughs>